single space list of Texans, of important films made in Texas, of famous filmmakers who had done a lot of their work in Texas, and it was, it was I mean, it was just a list to show that we go on for a long time. The fact that I'm being honored tonight proves the naysayers were correct. <laughs> So brace yourselves, I'm, I'm going to go a little long just because I figure everybody else up here has gotten many honors and will get many more, and this is my shot. <laughs> I'm nine years old. I'm in my grandmother's house in Lakewood, New Jersey. And my grandmother's a shrew. She's a real monster. But I'm, in order to go out the back way, I have to go through her bedroom. She's a huge four-poster bed, really fluffy and really wonderful. The TV's on. I'm walking through the room. There's a movie on the TV. I climb on the bed to watch her for a couple of minutes. I'm there until it ends. It's Frank Capra's Lost Horizon. And I left the room a different person than when I entered it. And in a lot of ways, that marked the rest of my life. A couple of years later, and my whole life is a story of, of people, of meeting people and people reaching out to me and people asking me to do things. I'm much less uh, an instigator than I am an enabler. But several years later in, uh, in, in Teaneck, New Jersey, where I grew up, I was in the library and I met a friend of mine, somebody I knew, but we didn't know each other really well. And he was in the library at a table, we sat down and started talking movies. This was Leonard Maltin, who wanted to be an entertainment tonight and do all the TV movie books. And that Saturday, we were 12 years old, that Saturday he took me into New York City. We went to the Museum of Modern Art to watch a program of Charlie Chaplin shorts, and it was sold out. But we, hundreds of times after that, went into New York, so we went to film societies, to museums, to theaters, to collectors' homes and spent much of my childhood watching movies that you know people would love to see that you just couldn't see in every way. And so Len really he was the first one to open me up. Years later, I was kind of lost. Like I'd come to UT as a graduate English student because I'd been an undergraduate English student because I couldn't think of anything else to do. And Len suggested that I visit the UTF RTF department because he knew some people there. And I went and I met graduate students and professors who I'm friends with to this day. And at one point, George Weed said to me, one of the professors, you know, if you want to join as a graduate film student in RTF, we'd be happy to have you. And I, I'm pretty sure they wanted a conduit to Len. But it was very gracious of them, and I joined the film department at the University of Texas, and everything that's happened to me happened after that. I mean, the people I'm still working with, I met there. Um, the, the goals that we aspired to began there. It was really because of Len, because of the UT RTF department, because of Cinema Texas, really changed my life. In 1980, I got my master's in fine arts from the uh, UT RTF department, and sometime thereafter, Nick Barbaro and Joe Dishner approached me. They were going to start a weekly publication in Austin called the Austin Chronicle, and did I want to be involved? And I said yes. I was their first recruit, and uh, there were about six of us who started. Joe left after the first year, and as kind of a Soviet photo reclamation person, I've been wiping Joe out of the picture ever since, claiming it was Nick and I who started the paper. It was actually Joe and Nick who came to me and asked if we would start it. Uh, and, and Nick and I developed a partnership there. And, and there's a lot of unsung heroes in my story, and one of them is Nick Barbaro, who really taught us. Is, he's the odd fellow in the group. I mean, he's the one who drives the dog car around, this three-legged dog, patron on Mars in the dog art car. And he likes to wear shorts when it's snowing. Uh, but he's also taught us how to do business. He's taught us how to be moral. He's taught us how to act with integrity. And we all learned from him. And so we started the Chronicle together. A few years after that, in November of 1986, Roland Swenson and Lewis Myers came to Nick and I and said, let's start a regional, a little regional conference for the, move, move, the music business, maybe four or five states. And, um, you know, at first I was actually reluctant. The Chronicle was bi-weekly every other week. We were going to go weekly at some point. I thought, let's not bite off something else. But Roland persevered. We started South by Southwest. Lewis left after a while. I've gotten more credit for South by Southwest when Roland has always been the visionary. He has always been the managing director. It's been a privilege that Nick and I have gotten to work with him to, to, to benefit from his vision, from his sense of what this could be. And again, I think the three of us working together really made it happen. But if this is honors anybody, it has to honor Roland Swift. In, in 
1985, I met Rick Linkletter at a club, Liberty Lunch. We began talking, we became friendly. I gave him an ad in the Chronicle for his first event that would eventually become the Austin Film Society. Thereafter, he asked me and Charlie Napis and Charles Ramirez Berg, and Chip Bray comes in pretty early on, but he asked if we'd be the founding board members of the Film Society. We said yes, and for the longest time, all that meant is once a year, Rick would come around and get us to sign a piece of paper, because Rick and Lee Daniel and, and, and um, Katie Coconos and a lot of, and Dee Montgomery were really the driving forces. So once again, I got the benefit from the hard work of others. I'm a big fan of benefiting from the hard work of others. <laughs> And then um, Rick asked if I'd be in a movie he was making. I was like, oh, maybe, I don't know. So I showed up one day for what I was terrified would be hours of shooting and ended up with one line in Slacker that is, you know, it's a shocker around the world. People have called me from all over the planet who I haven't seen in a long time saying, I just saw Slacker on a VHS or I just watched Slacker in a movie theater. And so once again, I benefited from knowing Rick Linklater. Cool. And then a little bit after that, Rick and some people got really serious about making the Film Society into something important. We created a board, I was the first board president, and we began to do things, Rick called me again, and this is Rick Linkletter, this is, you know, this is not me calling Rick, this is Rick Linkletter, called me in the, about 96 and said, you know, federal and state funding for the arts has dried up. Let's create a Texas Filmmakers Reduction Fund. We'll get our friends, Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, Mike Judge, myself, to show their movies, we'll do premieres, we'll charge for those premieres, and we'll take that money, and we'll give it to independent film and video makers. And since 1996, <laughs> since 1996, we've given away 1.2 million dollars, and so many of the filmmakers who were just at Sundance, and so many who are going to be at South by Southwest, got early grants from that money. And again, this is Rick's vision. And later, Rick would come to me and he would say, you know, we should take some of the hangers at the airport and turn them into a studio. And we spent a year negotiating with the city. And, and, uh, and since then, $3 billion worth of film production has come to Austin through the Austin studios. And again, it was Rick and Rebecca and the Film Society people. When I was on the board of the Film Society, we gave money to the filmmakers, and we would ask them to come to board meetings and do presentations. And so one time, the, a filmmaker named Margaret Brown came and she showed some footage she was shooting, she was making a documentary about Towns Van Zandt. And I love Towns Van Zandt with a passion I cannot describe. And I've always thought none of the recorded music came close to the magic of Towns Live. And I thought Summer for Footage did. So I said, how can I help? I knew somebody wanted to put some money to a film. I connected them. Paul Steckler suggested to Margaret that she make me an executive producer, which she did. I was leery, leery on the, glorious, gleeful, for a couple of days and then worked, ended up working in the film every day for three years, <laughs> which was one of the great experiences of my life. And I don't really think I knew that Margaret was a great, great filmmaker until I was involved with her second film, The Order of Miss, which won a Peabody Award. And her third film is going to debut at South by Southwest this week. <laughs> Steckler here or Robert Rodriguez or all these other people who I really should, but I'm, I'm not. There's just a couple more I want to talk about. One of the things that gets to happen to me now and that I get credit for is I found a friend named Elliot Roberts. And Elliot's one of the most remarkable people I know. I, he's told me stories about how he does business. I've read stories about how he does business. And I tend to do them as business co-ed. I talk when I'm talking to people who are entrepreneurial, I tend to tell them Elliot Roberts stories so that they can ponder on it and think about it. And um, Elliot called me a couple of weeks back, and this is just how it makes it look like I do things when I don't. Elliot called me and said, Lewis, I have a huge favor to ask of you. Now I should point out that Elliot Roberts has been Neil Young's manager since Neil Young left the Buffalo Springfield. That entire amazing career is due to Elliot as are many careers. So Elliot called me and said, I have a favor to ask. He said, Neil Young's got a new delivery system for music. Do you think we could show it off at South by Southwest? Neil Young, South by Southwest. <laughs> Elliot, what have you done for me lately that I should do you this favor? <laughs> so of course I said yes. I have to, uh, um, I, I, there's a couple of false endings, but I'm not that far from the real ending. First I have to talk about the, our dead brethren, the people who got us here, who really brought us along, who are no longer with us. Jeff Whittington, 
George Morris, Eve MacArthur, Brent Grilke, Paul Bartel. The list goes on, it's really long, but so many people contributed to make what I think is an extraordinary scene. And then I really have to talk about the people who made it happen. With a South by Southwest film, it was Nancy Schaefer, and there was Matt Dentler, and Angela Davis, and Matt Dentler, and Janet Pearson, who have really taken it and made this an international event. But, but most importantly, the people who are still working, the people who work at South by Southwest, the per people who work at the Austin Film Society, the people who work at the Austin Chronicle, the people at Arts and Labor, all the people who work in the film scene, I have to mention them. And it's just an extraordinary amount of people who have helped us do what we've done. One last vignette, and it's kind of a, a sidebar, but it goes back to 1979. I'm in visiting New York City. We go visit a bunch of guys who are living in a basement apartment. I think there might be 15 or 20 of them, but it might have only been three or four. They just keep, seem to keep coming out of rooms. The friend of the, who I'm traveling with, it's, the, it's uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now has just opened in New York City. It's showing in a theater. It's showing without credits. There are line, enormously long lines. It's impossible to get into. So our friend takes us there. He has people staked out at the beginning of the line holding spaces for us. We get in the theater, he not only knows the row we're going to sit in, he knows the seats we're going to sit in for the best possible experience. <laughs> this is Michael Barker. This is before my, Michael Barker was working at Films Inc. This is before he creates the modern independent art film distribution that he does at Orion Classics and Sony Classics. He, this is when he's starting out. He already loves movies and he already loves watching movies. But the important part of this story is that I was with a guy named Ed Lauer. My son asked me if I was going to cry, and I said probably because I'm going to mention Ed Lowry. Uh, Ed Lowry was the director of Cinema Texas when I started there. He was a founding editor of the Austin Chronicle. He was a fellow graduate student at the University of Texas with us. He was our teacher. He was our leader. He was our inspiration. Ed Lowry was one of the most important people in my life and really colored everything I've ever done. In October of 1985, and I only know this because of the Chronicle, I would never have remembered any of this, but the first week in October of 1985, at the Dobie Theater, Rick Linkletter and Lee Daniel presented two programs of short films that the Chronicle gave him advertising for, that we gave him advice for, that would become the Austin Film Society. This is their very first two presentations. Uh, and they both sold out and literally led to the Austin Film Society. In the third week of October of 1985, uh, Laguna Gloria and Swamp presented independent images, a film festival. Uh, a, a lot of what you know, South by Southwest would be on a much smaller scale. And the two filmmakers they hosted were Jonathan Demi, who was already a friend. He was with his friend Sandy McLeod, who also has a film showing at South by Southwest 2014. And John Sales and Maggie Renzi. And this would begin a lifelong friendship with all these people, which would impact the whole scene. The second week of October, 1985, Ed Lowry died in Dallas. We all drove up to say goodbye. Everything I've done, there's this annoying voice in my head. This smug guy sitting there with his arms crossed, with a slight smile, a tilted smile. And everything I've ever done, I've heard that voice, and if that voice was mocking me or calling me out, then I couldn't do it. And when that, when it was full speed ahead, it was full speed ahead. So this one I take for all the people I work with, for the amazing, amazing people I work with, but most of all, Fred Lowry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>